Hello everybody, I'm Star Raptor, and welcome back for another episode of This Week in Star Wars Canada. Every week I break it all down for you guys, everything from the TV series, to the novels, to the comics, and to the video games. And this week, we're switching up the pace a little bit, because we have a new animated series to talk about. They are a series of shorts called Forces of Destiny. It was first announced at Star Wars Celebration, and at time of recording, I have watched three of them. There's supposed to be, I think, eight of them coming out in the next consecutive couple days and I think they're taking a break and then doing another eight so basically what these are all about these are two to three minutes long they are published on a Disney YouTube channel if anywhere in between 1 p.m. Eastern or today it was like 3 p.m. Eastern something like that um, so the first two episodes we got were about Ray and it was basically from the time she got BB-8 to the point where she goes to Nemi Outpost, you know, somewhere in between. It's what's cool about these little shorts is they kind of go in between the the storylines. So the first short was about her and BB-8, and she had just freed BB-8 basically. And there's this big sand monster that comes up, and she's fighting him. It's it's really a cute thing. It's it's mainly geared for children, but I still get a kick out of it. Now the second episode with Ray uh, was also you know, on Jack Q, and it was really a speeder chase, reminiscent a little bit of Return of the Jedi. What's cool about this one is there is that character that she freed BB-8 from. He resurfaces. His alien name is a Tito, and they also call themselves Tito as a name. It's kind of odd. I learned that in the Visual Dictionary. So anyway, that whole episode is basically about Ray just defending BB-8 from these bandits. And we just got one today, which involves Princess Leia on Endor involving Ewoks, specifically Wicket, and I really like this one a lot because what it does is it gives us a great new plot point. How does Leia get that dress that we see her in, in Return of the Jedi? Well, it's all because she basically saves Wicket's life on the way back to the uh, Bright Fall Village, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so it's really cool how we're getting this these canon stories. These are in the canon. These are there as high as everything else, you know, as far as canon with the comics and the movies and the TV series. These are really cool little things, and, you know, I, I don't hold a lot of, you know, hope that these are going to be, like, spawning, like, ridiculous new sources of material, but, or revelations, basically, but from what I've seen, I've really been enjoying it. I really like the animation style. It kind of reminds me of the first Clone Wars micro-series called Just Clone Wars by uh, Tarchowski, and uh, yeah, so I really like the step away from the C more CG to just a regular traditional type of animation, so episodes we can look forward to would involve Jyn Erso, Ahsoka Tano, Padme, and supposedly there's going to be an episode with Hera, so I can't wait, and I'm really enjoying these. It's really nice getting a new piece of Star Wars canon every single day. It's it's just something I've been looking forward to and they're just bite-sized. Again, they're like three minutes long um, and they're also going to air on the Disney Channel I think on July 9th in between commercials of whatever their prime time shows are or something like that. So moving on to comics, we also got two new ones this week. First off I want to talk about Star Wars number 33. I also picked up the 40th anniversary variant where Luke actually looks a little bit like Link from The Legend of Zelda. So last we left off we had that crossover between Star Wars and uh, and Dr. Aphra called Screaming Citadel. So I was reviewing each one of those comics. You could check it out in previous videos. Started off strong and it got really weird at the end. So now with uh, Star Wars number 33 this is part one of Rebels in the Wild and so Leia and Luke they are on this ship and they get into a bit of trouble with the Empire they try to escape in this nebula and they have to land on this planet because they're they're running out of fuel and whatnot so this is a really interesting take on Star Wars because what it is is it is basically about Luke and Leia surviving and it and there's weeks that go by and this is basically a water world and they have to basically strip their shuttle craft for survival needs such as moisture evaporators which is pretty cool because Luke already knows how to you know work them and everything and they actually have to you know dispose of their blasters and all this stuff and it's getting to the point where they are going back in time it's like Star Wars back in time the, you know you have Leia using a bow and arrow and well Luke still has his lightsaber but he's you know they're basically fishing and all this kind of stuff and then what happens is they realize that they're not the only sentient beings on the planet and there are these um, 
kind of like these fish frog people there and they realized that when they went to this planet the empire found out they were there and now the empire has disturbed this peaceful group of people at least i think they are peaceful and now luke and leia feel like they have to get involved with this war because they brought it to their planet so it's got a very wonder woman-esque vibe to it for some reason um but what i did like about this is that it, it forces us to look at the characters in a new way and basically luke and leia they team up and it reminds me a bit of Return of the Jedi. They use all these kind of contraptions and traps uh, that they discover and use the, the, um, the indigenous life forms to kind of use like poison and whatnot to basically just get rid of the Empire. So it was a really great issue. This is off to an excellent start. I've really enjoyed the hell out of this one. Uh, specific things I liked is for once we actually get narration from Leia. We get these little narration blocks, bubbles. And it just gets us more into what is going on with her. And for the first time, I think, in this entire um, Star Wars canon. Well, I mean, there's probably been other instances. But this issue really um, has Leia reflecting on the destruction of her home planet of Alderaan. It has her thinking about all of that, just talking about it with Luke. It's really nice seeing her open up and just to see Luke and Leia having a, a slow moment in their lives when they're on this planet to really just discuss things that have been on each other's minds. Um, something I really liked was learning more about Leia's past as well, about on all the round how she used to run away and she was more of a rebellious kid from the get-go and she learned a couple of really good things when she was all around because Luke asked her like how are you learning all these survival skills well she used to do it on her, on all around all the time by herself and one of the most badass things in here is when she's using a bow and arrow like it's she's basically kind of similar to Wonder Woman I'm not saying she is but again, that's like the first thing that popped in my mind was just the way that the colors were. It's kind of reminding me of uh, Themyscira in a way, where they were on this on this island in this in this very lush kind of tropical world. Um, and it just again, just seeing Luke and Leia put things together to survive was just very fresh for Star Wars. And I'm getting into more nerdy stuff here. I loved seeing the ad at you know you know emerging from the ocean that was just such a beautiful picture it's just really cool seeing that these things can actually you know survive underwater and again the return of the jedi stuff where luke is basically using these like traps with poison darts to take out the scarif or not scarif but the shore troopers so again i love seeing the story group just kind of Put elements in from now Rogue One, so we're seeing the Shore Troopers, which is one of my favorite trooper designs, and Luke is just going out there like a badass, just cutting them down left and right with his lightsaber. So cool. And finally, one last thing to talk about is that little tease at the last page. We see Lando Calrissian and Sanasaros on uh, Coruscant, and they're by the Senate building, and they're planning some kind of thing going on over there, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out in the next issue. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about today is Rogue One number four, so what happens in this storyline to where we see it in the movie is we pick up on Edu, and we go all the way up to the point where the rebels are basically hijacking one of those shuttles and going to Scarif. So we have everything in between there. And something I really liked is about this comic has been way better than the Force Awakens adaptation because it's been giving more, it's basically more liberal with its use in deleted scenes and stuff that didn't make it into the movie. So the first one I want to talk about is right in the beginning we have the flashbacks of Galen and Krennic. So you have Krennic, you know, he's bit disoriented by the explosion um, so he's kind of having these like little mental flashbacks you see one of them where it's basically like him rescuing uh, the Ursos from I think it was Volt or Vold or something one of those worlds that was in the beginning of the Catalyst novel so again yeah, like seeing all these elements kind of folding into each other great job with the story group there I also did enjoy on Edu when we had this nice scene between K2 and Bodhi and Bodhi is enlisting the help of K2 to get the shuttle and you know K2 is kind of questioning what Bodhi is doing this for and Bodhi he basically gets to an agreement with K2 when he says look we are both wearing the same symbol of the Empire and now we are both 
rising up against the Empire. We don't really know what the heck we're doing here, but, and they basically come to an agreement. It's this really cool thing where they both empathize with each other. You know, K2 is a reprogrammed droid, and Bodhi was basically like Galen Urso reprogrammed me. So I thought that was really cool. I would actually like to see that in the movie. But of course, we can't have like a four hour movie. But if we did, I would definitely see it. And just, I love the quality of this comic, man. I, I just like the quality where it's like the dialogue is right on with the movie. And just the illustrations are absolutely awesome with the panel design and just interweaving of the scenes is just a really great thing. So that is going to do it for another episode of This Week in Star Wars Canon. But I want to know what you guys thought of everything I talked about today. What did you think of Star Wars number 33? What did you think of Rogue One number 4? And what are you thinking about Forces of Destiny, the new TV short series on YouTube? So it's not really a TV series. Let's talk about it in that comment section below. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. I release new episodes of This Week in Star Wars Canon just about every Wednesday, sometimes a little behind. But you can also find more gaming content. I started doing some kind of Let's Plays with my Xbox One, and I do movie reviews and TV series talk all the time. So make sure you subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you always. So did you like the video then make sure you rate it a thumbs up and if you did that go over there hit that star after head so you subscribe to my channel. Doing so will keep you up to speed on all of my latest content speaking of which you can see a couple of my recent uploads down below. I'm also on social media so what are you waiting for? Let's start nerding out.